yesterday and today, there is a common theme. That theme is that digital transformation, or transformation in general, is not a one-off project, it is a journey. Um, it's also uh, a starting point for a lot of us um, to begin a new vision for our organisations and feed that into our cultures that we then use to um, plan and uh, uh, continue that work of transformation through sec subsequent phases. Um, but in terms of the overall way that the world is changing, there is a new paradigm for us where data is the currency that is exchanged between organisations within organisations. Modern applications and the uh, internet of things are the printing presses for this currency. For ACU, how do we provide insight into this data to better inform decision making? How might we capitalise on this currency and the printing presses of this currency to support our businesses going forward as well as the outcomes thereafter? What we had internally was an ambitious goal, <laughs> like any organisation, to enter the data once and to be able to reuse it. And the question for us as an IT group was how do we, as the IT directorate, enabled this strategy for the business and the outcomes thereafter. So the spoiler alert here is that this is a business answer to a business question, a cool answer for a business question. And you heard that, I think, in Sanjeev's uh, presentation yesterday, where technology should come last. Um, so if you are still here, which I can tell everyone is still hanging around, great, jump on the bus with me for a quick journey, or at least an instant. Um, but if you do want more information on what we did, specifically the technical details behind the projects that we undertook, they're available online on the WSO2 site as a case study. I'll provide the links uh, in this presentation so you can actually reference those as any at any point in time. So a little bit about the university. It was established in uh, January 1991 today that the total student population is somewhere in the order of 35,000 people. Uh, depending on the semester, uh, that can vary from 32 to 35, or whenever our or Oracle licensing true up is due. <laughs> um, we also have 2,500 staff that are spread out over eight campuses nationally and internationally. Um, or translated into another sense, there are four states along the eastern seaboard of Australia one territory and one European outpost, which is Rome. We're all still waiting for our familiarisation tour um, to try and get our sense of what challenges they're facing there, but good luck. <laughs> uh, so our story, our story, pretty much like anybody else's, begins with challenges. Um, in our context, we're a ge geographically separated entity. We had low maturity levels in various areas the organisation, we had a skills gap, we also had an unknown technology ecosystem, we had internal resistance to change, we had multiple projects running at various speeds in various um, parts of the organisation. What we also wanted was to maintain control of our currency. We didn't want that currency, which is the data, to be counterfeited or misused, abused. So what we undertook uh, prior to doing anything was a discovery phase, a technology review. We wanted to understand what it was that we were dealing with. And what we discovered was that there were 300 plus applications throughout our organisation. We also had what we referred to as a point-to-point -point interface hairball. Okay, I'm sure you've seen the diagrams out there. It's a bit of a spaghetti of point-to-point -point integrations between systems which meant we had multiple data sources potentially providing the same information or duplicating it along the way. So our next logical step was to start with a design phase. The design phase started with, no guesses here, a vision from the vice chancellor, the head of the organisation. He specifically told us that he wanted to improve the student experience. 
make it seamless, make it an anytime, anywhere access and consistent experience across the board, no matter where those students are. That fed through to the corp, uh, chief operating officer who embraced that vision and individually our CIO, Mr. Niranjan Prabhu, also embraced that. And that cascaded down into our IT directorate. That started with an enterprise architecture of how we might actually shape the business itself and um, complement that with a technology portfolio. But it also included a new IT culture. What did we want to deliver as part of this change as our overall vision for the workforce in the future and how that would actually deliver the strategy and outcomes for the university? We then began with an infrastructure streamlining, including cloud adoption. Uh, the systems and uh, services that were sitting in a dedicated data center on premise to the cloud. We also um, looked at what we needed to do in terms of our application portfolio to rationalize it down, make it a little bit easier for us to manage and clean things up in terms of the integrations at the same time. We also knew that we needed a new integration platform to get rid of that point-to-point -point of the hairball. Alongside that, we also needed to revamp our student experience. So remembering the vision, which was the seamless student experience. We had a content management system which had got us to a certain point. We now needed to get to the next point, which is a seamless experience, consistent, et cetera, et cetera. And we needed a platform that we could build on in case we wanted to roll out new features, in case we wanted to do any other work. We also, as part of cultural change and revamp of our own uh, group, wanted to make sure that we had a cybersecurity capability. So that included a program to uplift that capability. Basically, if you've seen the movie Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner, we had a reverse Field of Dreams moment. So the, the catchphrase of the movie is, if you build it, they will come. For us, it was a Yoda moment. We will build, we will build it, and surely they will be coming to us. A little Once we actually had implemented the uh, integration platform, we also needed a proof of value project. We knew why we had to do it, because we had that point-to-point -point integration nightmare. We, needed, we knew what we needed to do, which was blitz the backyard completely, get rid of those point-to-point -point integrations. The proof of value came alongside the inter integration implementation project. We had done the strategy, we knew what we needed to do for enterprise integration as well as the platform implementation. We've implemented the, the actual platform itself, and then we would say, here is the proof of concept that this thing works. It will deliver the value to you as a business organization. The proof of value for us was again related to the student experience. We needed to improve what was a very disjointed or disconnected experience for the student. They had to log on to separate systems to access their class allocations or their timetables, to do their overall uh, subject allocations, to access their learning management system, to look at all their personal data. We unified that in a student portal, which we built on a separate platform, which was Sitecore. This is just a little snapshot of the then proof of value project, which provided access uh, to the student to their units and results, which was a very, very commonly requested service that they would go to our student administration unit. If we brought it online, we could actually manage the, the traffic and the effect on that uh, department, but also make it a, an anytime, anywhere experience for the student. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Portal gave the student access to the course units of study information as well as the learning management system gave them the results or, or their results to date. And it also provided the access um, single, via single sign-on to the most commonly used systems. What we managed to do in that project, and that proof of value project, was address the, the challenges. 
we had a 100-day vision, and that was to enable that organisational strategy. It's a little bit hot under the slide, so apologies. Um, <clears throat> it was enabling the strategy for the organisation, that seamless user experience. It also meant that we transformed IT, not just at the technology level, but also at the people and process level. In other words, we went from being an order taker, an IT directorate, to a partner, a true partner. We actually delivered something that said, here's something we can do for you to solve a business problem, an organisational-wide problem. It also gave us an established pro program of work to implement the digital foundations for the organisation. Some of the benefits we realised was that WSO2 was our key backbone for our digital transformation. By centralising the connections, we essentially opened up the world. We also brought agility and resilience to a previously disconnected world. It put us in sync with other sector-wide transformations, and I'm not just talking about education, but across the board. It also allowed us to facilitate the cloud services adoption, where we had those monolithic systems that we all looked at yesterday in the, some of the keynotes. We started the capability transition to be able to adopt a cloud service, move our previously on-premise, on in-house systems to something we could subscribe to. It also gave us that secure, reliable and timely data transport that we so often needed for our organisational reporting or those data insights to better inform our decisions. It also gave us that anytime, anywhere access to that data with an enhanced user experience. And by that, we're also translating that to the end consumer, for in this case, we're the staff and students for ACU. It also did something very unexpected, but for us it was an expected benefit. It also brought governance to the forefront. Previously, and if anyone has worked in uh, educational organisations or actually seen how the internal workings um, work, education institutions are essentially a kingdom of fiefdoms. Everyone is a tribal chief, everyone has a chest of money, and everyone can do whatever they want with that money. By implementing the WSO2 platform, we actually brought to the forefront the problem that they had, that they didn't know they had, which was how do we govern the data that we have under our control? Now that it was opened, now that it was being passed around, they wanted to know who's getting it, how often, what do I do if someone else requests access? So it was a great way to highlight to them for the, for the need to implement a master data management um, and data custodian approach to the organisation. It also created our worst problem, a new culture, meaning we couldn't keep up with the demand. We had the one person and we knew we had a whole lot of work to do, but it also gave us a way to do So you might remember it all started with a vision. It then went on through a proof of concept or a proof of value project. So from 2016, quarter one to quarter four, we went through our proof of value or proof of concept project. It started with finding a new content management platform to deliver that seamless user experience. It included the WSO2 ESB platform to connect the dots behind the scenes. And then it ended up with a new revised student experience in the student portal. 2017 came around, quarter one. First thing we did was looked at the overall architecture of the thing and looked at what technical debt remained as part of the project or what new discoveries we made along the way once the students started using the system in quarter one. Quarter two meant we now understood what we needed to do to fix the problem. So we went through another round of solution architecture um, and we basically reformatted the ecosystem in the background and made some quick win changes to improve the overall experience. It also allowed us to start the case to formulate a new project. So working with our colleagues and partners in marketing, 
we put together a business case for a new and improved public website and student portal project. One of the problems and challenges that we didn't anticipate was that Sitecore has a very specific skill set. To recruit for that particular skill set, we spent a good six months testing the market and looking at who we had available to us. What we found was that we couldn't trump the salaries that were being paid uh, by some of the bigger banks that use Sitecore. And we, we had to find an implementation partner. So we, we started a round of diligence or review to try and find someone who could work with us uh, to implement this new project or these new projects. Quarter one, 2018. We started the implementation and review of our point-to-point -point integration. So you might remember I referred to that hairball. We actually wanted to do something about it now. We had some, we had some time. We wanted to go through the process of planning who was first. Quarter two, we went through an ecosystem rebuild for the entire student and public website facing systems. But this also included tooling up and configuration for our teams. So you might remember the people process technology bit when we were talking about the vision and culture changes. Quarter three, which is what we're doing right now, we're undertaking a whole lot of work around our ERP system. Onboarded another uh, integration developer and we're starting work on our HR system, which is a software as a service provided to us by Orion. We're also looking at integrating our CRM. In fact, we're not looking, we're integrating our CRM with the Sitecore, um, Sitecore systems for Student Portal and for Public Website. We want to know how people engage with us and what they're looking for when they first reach out to us. Hopefully, in the spirit of being able to convert those prospective students into actual students. <clears throat> we also know we need to do some work on our platform, WSO2. We need to upgrade to the latest version. We need to implement a few other modules that we're not currently using to enable some of the things that they've identified in the projects and planning for the future. And the plan for uh, quarter four is to basically launch the new public website and the new ERP integration re re uh, resolutions and progress with the next stage. 2019, we haven't planned out yet, but we're getting there. This is a bit of an insight into what our DevOps loop an agile model looks like for our student facing and public facing um, systems, which is Sitecore. And right here, bottom left hand side, so 2 our digital backbone, which enables all of these tools to talk to our systems, to make sure that they're sending the right data at the right time and presenting those to the end consumers, our staff and our students. <clears throat> on the next horizon for us, ACU student experience, which is that seamless anywhere, anytime connectivity, is to standardise things, first of all. Make sure that the search and content is personalised. We have our CRM integrated and we're making uh, use of chatbot and BI data warehouse integration. All of this will feed into the overall profile that we're capturing of the student, the prospective, and how we're converting them. And then when, be, when they become students, how we're retaining them. In terms of innovation and the cool stuff, um, we're completely revamping our student life cycle. What you can see here on the right hand side is a future state uh, student journey for ACU. It may change, but at least we're starting to think about how we're affecting the student. Uh, keep for the students and their journey. So the design of the targets designing for specific moments that matter to them. That could be first contact via the website, it could be orientation, it could be open day. <clears throat> In terms of our future direction, 
Our target state is frictionless. That's connected to a digital ecosystem. What we're looking at and making use of or taking advantage of are the cognitive technologies where the AI becomes an actor and IOTs initiate, communi communicate and interact with the business processes that we have in the background, essentially similar to autonomous cars. We're also looking at making sure that the experience is omni-channel, from onboarding right through to um, graduation, including micro-credentials for short courses. We're also looking at business services. But some of the key takeaways, before I leave some time for questions, if you cast your mind back to the first couple of slides, we had to have a plan which started with a vision. We also needed to understand how that vision translated into a piece of work that we could use to validate the hypothesis that we could deliver in the vision. ...of um, the various uh, vaporware that's out there in the marketplace and test them, validate them. We worked diligently in the background to select the right platform. We evaluated that against many other candidates and we implemented knowing that this was something we could use in the future. While on your first destination, first way, sorry, while you're on your way to the first destination, make sure you have the right governance in place. This will help to navigate your journey. And don't try to take on everything at once. And as the kids joke goes, how do we eat an elephant one piece at a time? Take it in small chunks. Start with the vision. Start with the plan to implement. What you're going to implement it for. And then once you reach your first destination, reflan and plan, plan this leg. So you might recall when I talked about the roadmap to the digital journey, I actually mentioned we took the time to reflect on the process. Now next leg. Be, a pre be prepared to adjust your plan. Plan doesn't survive the actual implementation. So you've got to be agile enough to change the plan along the way. And then, most importantly, refuel and service the bus like we're doing this quarter to make sure it continues to run smoothly. That concludes my presentation and uh, in Singhalese, <laughs> Please correct me if I get this wrong. Dan bus eken bahinna. Is that right? Great. Thank you. Um, we've got about five minutes for the presentation in terms of the Q&A. I'm happy to take questions if anyone's got any.